this offense just complete. They have a very unique set of receivers and the offensive line is playing very well. I think that we really need to give a lot of credit to Rodney Hudson. There's not that free blitzer coming very often like there was last year. And, and even when that does happen, Kyler Murray is just playing out of his mind. There was one play. It was a third and 16. There was a little bit of pressure. He escapes the pocket, outruns an edge rusher, scrambles downfield, picks up a first down. A couple plays later, James Cotter sitting at the end zone uh, for an easy goal line opportunity. So Kyler Murray's making plays not only for himself, but James Conner's getting walking touchdowns. Chase Edmonds is ripping off long plays. They're getting A.J. Green involved. Rondell Moore for a quick little screen here and there. And they're not even using DeAndre Hopkins that much. So it's a very well put together offense right now. And they're maximizing Kyler Murray's playmaking ability as a runner and as a deep ball thrower right now. Over 30 points and 400 yards of offense for the fourth time in four games for the Arizona Cardinals. Hayden, we talked about it heading into the season. We knew this team had a lot of fire firepower and, you know, 160 targets that we saw for DeAndre Hopkins last year, you know, Kenyon Drake near the red zone. They were good. And especially in the first half of the season when Keller was putting up incredible numbers, I try to sit back and ask, well, how are they so much better this year? And I think a major part of it is what you're saying with Rodney Hudson, where fixing maybe some of the gaps where Cliff Kingsbury is not doing well uh, early in his career in terms of uh, not being as sharp as maybe his uh, offensive coordinator mind might want him to be. But then also, Hayden, you have Chase Edmonds, who has 12 carries for 120 yards in between the 20s. You have James Conner filling in for you know that short yardage roll inside the 10-yard line. And then you're just allowing other players to be in their perfect positions because with DeAndre Hopkins on the left side, A.J. Green, who goes for 64 yards in the touchdown on the right side, including a 41-yarder to start this game, that allows you to have Rondale Moore and Christian Kirk in the slot. And while the Rams have so many pieces defensively, I, I really do feel like the, the Cardinals can beat you any way at this point. Like they can be powerful, they can be elongated, they can be exaggerated, and they can be explosive down the field. And that's a, that's a joy to watch every single Sunday. I think the primary difference outside of Rodney Hudson and Kyler Murray's definitely taking like another step with this playmaking ability, which is crazy, but it's AJ Green. I mean, he's winning in a lot of ways, contested catches downfield. It seems like whenever they're in the red zone, they flick the ball out to him in the flats and he scored a touchdown the last game. He got dragged down to like the two yard line in this game. And all of a sudden he's leading the team in like targets, air yards, red zone targets, and it's getting close to be production too. So I think that AJ Green has solidified himself as an at least upside wide receiver four in this offense for fantasy because he's not coming off the field and the Cardinals have used a little bit of 12 personnel down the red area and that's DeAndre Hopkins and AJ Green and obviously AJ Green's getting the weaker of the um, opposing corners too so right. AJ Green's looked better than I would say 95 percent of people would have assumed I know you focused on this game but what stood out to me a little bit was Jalen Ramsey getting his typical usage, but sometimes on third downs, flipping outside to go on one-on-one -on -one with DeAndre Hopkins, and they had some really good competitions out there. Yep. Yeah, whenever it was like a three-by-one three, three by one set and it was like isolation, and it was just DeAndre Hopkins out there, then they would put out Ramsey. So Ramsey played awesome. They're using him near the line of scrimmage and in the slot a little bit more. It just ultimately didn't matter because – Right now, the ball was just going to the outside, and Kyler yeah. was making plays on the outside. So it's it's a very, very hard offense to defend, and it just kind of comes down to, can the Cardinals' secondary hold up, or is their edge rushing talent so good that they can kind of hide those flaws in the back end? So good at spreading you out, running the football, and then when they do want to be powerful, like Max Williams on these screens with all these offensive yeah. linemen in front, it's really cool. He gets stuff. going. It's so much fun to watch yeah. when they do get going. Uh, before we move on from this game, we need to talk about the Rams offense yep. here, Hayden, because what changed? 13 points in the first half. They really didn't get you know to 20 until garbage time late on. I mean, the statistics aren't too bad in terms of you know two touchdowns, 280 yards for Matthew Stafford. Cooper Cup didn't hit like his peak that we've seen the weeks before. What stood out to you? I mean, Matthew Stafford just was missing wide open receivers right now. Like that's, that's all that happened really. I didn't notice anything schematically that was any different when the Rams were running the ball early, it was working. Uh, Sonny Michelle fumbled and then basically did not come back in the game. Daryl Henderson was the lead back and he was pretty effective. There was a lot of open lanes early on, but once the scoreboard got out of favor, the, the, the Cardinals were basically just playing prevent defense and then Matthew Stafford just picking his little spots underneath. But a lot of it was just, 
those 20 yard throws that he was hitting last week to Cooper cup. And like the couple weeks before that were just going incomplete. So we got bailed out with a Robert Woods touchdown late in the game, but he was still out targeted by cup 13 to six. I can't explain the Robert Woods usage right now, yeah. but maybe this forces McVay to go back to the drawing board because I think right now it's so Cooper cup heavy and it's kind of interesting to see Higby and, and Robert Woods kind of being afterthoughts right now. It's, I, I can't really explain it. 